you are talking about it. Good day and good day to us in the viewers of our free media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Africa is not a continent of problems, but a continent that is richly blessed with both natural resources and uh, a vibrant and intelligent human capital, that is the young people. Today on the program, Views and the Continent, we focus on how youth's potentials can be harnessed to enable them to thrive on the, the uh, historic uh, continent of free trade area. This was the just concluded uh, and first of its kind African continent of free trade area. Uh, Udaya celebration under the theme breaking the barriers to meaningful youth participation and inclusion in advocacy. Uh, it should be noted that the uh, launch of the African continent of free trade area is a, a great a milestone for the continent Africa and its uh, marriage right advantages are uh, uh, enormous and uh, uh, the, the free trade zone equally has uh, the uh, capacity to unlock uh, potentials for our vibrant, uh, especially economic potentials for our vibrant African youths towards contributing to defining a clear economic trajectory for the continent Africa, helping in realizing uh, the development agenda 2063 year uh, according to report uh, with over 75 percent of africa's uh, 1.2 billion people under the age of uh, 35 and now 453 million uh, africans aged between 15 uh, and uh, 35 uh, uh, there's a clear indication of that uh, the development outcomes of uh, africa's young people youth have a great role to play in uh, the total transformation of uh, the uh, continent Africa. However, in uh, contemporary society, we still see that African youth are faced uh, with merits of issues, problems, and then we're looking at how these problems can be solved. So, uh, uh, it's uh, harnessing youth's potential, a way towards solving the problems of young Africans uh, in today's world, and of course, is giving African uh, uh, youth opportunities under the African continent of free trade area. Uh, way forward towards uh, 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 emancipating uh, uh, the youth and of course bringing them to solving some of the problems faced by African youth unemployment, corruption, radicalism, and uh, you can name the rest. Uh, this and more, we're going to be discussing in the course of the program. And of course, we're asking uh, this question, if youth potentials in Africa, or uh, how are ready uh, the political actors, civil society, and other stakeholders in harnessing youth potentials to see that the African youth thrive under the continent of free trade area of course we want to also analyze how ready these young people in africa are to make good use of the advantages presented by the continent of free trade area all what you are about this how ready are uh, young Africans or the youth in Africa to maximize the advantages of uh, the uh, African continent uh, free trade uh, area? And of course, what are the political actors doing? Uh, is there a strong political will to see that uh, young Africans are included or inculcated uh, in uh, the uh, platform, the African continent uh, free trade area? Hello to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us this day. It is views on the continent uh, on your pan-african television Africa media another opportunity for us to talk very important uh, issues uh, concerning the african continent and today we come again to talk the historic african free trade area and of course uh, we're not looking at how african governments can maximize the advantages Today we are looking at the place of the young people in uh, harnessing and maximizing the advantages uh, of the uh, uh, African continental free trade area that talks about free trade among African nations. Of course, this is what we're going to discuss. It is an interactive as well as informative program for one hour. We're going to be together. So you share your own opinion of what you think about uh, uh, this topic. Uh, are the youth ready?
to take the advantages this is what we're going to talk about now uh, let's uh, uh, go straight away to uncovering the panel this day uh, to present to us or bring more uh, insight on this very important uh, topic and it's with pleasure that I introduce to you engineer Ruben Tamba he's the chairman CEO uh, UB, uh, UB Prima Logistics and Travels Limited and also uh, the After Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council. Hello to you, sir, and thanks for joining us this day. Thank you very much, uh, Gladys. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to uh, be present here. Uh, it's, a, it's a house I know very well, so I want to thank you very much for, for the invitation. Pleasure is mine. It's always a pleasure knowing that you have accepted uh, to be part of this platform, sharing your own uh, view, opinion of what you think. How can we inculcate uh, the African youth in uh, the developmental uh, programs of the continent? Uh, going now over to Nigeria, we are meeting uh, a lady, of course, uh, uh, Ambassador Odebili uh, Pamela. She is a uh, Ikoyaka uh, Nigeria co-founder, start right uh, BDS. It's a pleasure having you this day, uh, dear Pamela, on the Pan-African Television. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to be here. Anything to move Africa forward. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Ruben, and of course, uh, dear Pamela, for accepting to share your views on this very important topic concerning the youth. And of course, it, it's good that we have youths represented. And we are talking the African continental free trade area, looking at how youth's potentials can be uh, harnessed uh, to make them thrive uh, in the present context in uh, Africa. I, I will start with you, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Ruben Tamber, uh, let's first of all talk about the uh, uh, the Youth Day celebration that just ended uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, celebrating uh, the uh, African continent of free trade area a Youth Day. And uh, like I underlined already in the preamble, it accentuated on this theme, breaking the barriers to meaningful youth participation and inclusion in advocacy. Can you please tell us about this uh, Youth Day celebration and how important imperative it is in the present day Africa. Thank you very much, uh, Gladys. Uh, uh, permit me to start by uh, expressing my gratitude to all the member states of the African Union who have uh, decided to turn the page as to what uh, formerly obtains in Africa. Uh, to also thank uh, the, the secretary of uh, the AFTAC, the African Continental Free Trade Secretariat, and to thank all youths because uh, the mobilization wasn't easy. I'm just coming back from East Africa, where I spent close to a month. The mobilization wasn't easy, so we wish to. I wish to use this opportunity to thank all youths who actually could uh, create time to be part of this history-making event, uh, the first ever uh, African Continental Free Trade Youth Day which was celebrated on the 9th of uh, November, physically in, uh, in uh, Kampala, Uganda, uh, chaired by the Minister for, for Youth Affairs in the Republic of uh, Uganda. Uh, so it, it was a very wonderful day. Uh, we, the youth, we came together. Uh, we expressed our wish of uh, fully taking part and fully seeing that uh, the African continental free trade is implemented because uh, as uh, youth leaders, we, we, we think that if this agreement is implemented, we are going to have less youth manipulation in Africa as uh, it obtains now. And uh, we are going to be able to remove all of our peers who are into terrorism and uh, all those bad vibes you, you, you may want to name it. So we think uh, this agreement has come at the right time. And we leaders, we youth leaders in the continent, we are going to do our utmost best. We are going to work day and night to see that we use this particular agreement to create jobs, opportunities, and uh, also uh, educate our peers who are into all those uh, funny uh, groups to, to know that it is time for us to put our energies together to build our continent so that uh, we will stop wanting to use the, the, the uh, Red Ocean or the Mediterranean Sea to go to where 
we think is uh, greener pastures. We have greener pastures in Africa. Uh, we just need to put ourselves together and uh, coordinate ourselves and uh, and get those uh, possibilities at our at our the doorsteps. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, it is, of course, uh, uh, very imperative. Uh, it is, of course, imperative to educate uh, the young Africans. Uh, uh, you, you just pointed out something uh, which I want us to dwell on in the course of the program. Before going to that, let's uh, uh, get the viewpoint of uh, Pamela uh, regarding the, the youth uh, the uh, uh, under after that was celebrated here on the line on the 9th of November uh, 2022 to note that uh, this morning November has been set aside as the, the youth month for the uh, African continent of free trade area. This is an agreement, a great milestone uh, to note that uh, countries have already started uh, trading under the uh, uh, dictates of the African continent of free trade area. But then looking at an Africa that is made up of young people, how do we place the young people uh, in uh, at the center, uh, central stage of uh, this uh, great milestone? Milestone. This is what we are looking at, uh, talking about this day. Uh, coming to you, Pamela, you, you took interest in this uh, uh, event. Uh, what uh, appraisal uh, do you have or did you have uh, of the ever first uh, Africa uh, Youth Day on the after? Okay, so we all know that um, economies worldwide are facing the issue of poverty and is finding it hard to provide for young people. Africa is actually worst hit because we have the highest number of um, young people. But the interesting part about this is that young people in Africa are not folding their arms. They are not doing anything. You see, when they've seen that poverty is on the rise, they are tilting into entrepreneurship, doing business. But then again, is there the ease of doing business? That is what the AFCFTA is all about. So that is why the Youth Day was actually formed to get um, real-time information from young people on the struggles they are facing in business, the ideas they have, how they can better make um, ease of business in the whole of Africa and in short, the prosperity of Africa on its own. So the Youth Day was a very important day. The FCFTA Youth Day was a very important day for young people because it was an opportunity to not just air their views, but also showcase themselves what they are doing. And then of course, bring before policymakers issues they are facing. So that when the AFCFTA is fully implemented, it's actually solved problems that young people are facing in Africa. So yeah. imperative what you just said uh, it is often said that when uh, uh, people are not economically viable uh, there is uh, bound to be uh, uh, many problems and that's why uh, we're having lots of youth problems in in Africa just to remind those of you televiewers joining us that this is uh, the program views on the continent on the pan-african television and we're looking at the place of the young people in uh, the African continent Africa trade area how can they thrive and uh, coming at a time uh, where uh, we uh, know all the dictates of the uh, uh, development agenda 2063 that talks about skills development that talks about uh, uh, defining a clear economic trajectory for Africa but then how can this be done if the youths are not included that is what we are discussing this day uh, just to remind you also that we are live on Africa media on Facebook uh, uh, freak media you can join us uh, there you leave your comments and uh, especially constructive comments on how to inculcate uh, young people in uh, today's uh, uh, historic uh, free trade area uh, coming back to your uh, mr tamber uh, we just heard about the initiative of the african youth week but then our topic for today is talking about harnessing africans uh, the potentials of young people choosing this topic is very important because sometimes young people in Africa don't even know their endowment and thus we are looking at how the, the especially the political actors and other stakeholders can help harness or bring to, to the fore uh, these uh, potentials of young people to make them thrive or excel under the, the after. Uh, so what's your opinion on this? Thank you very much uh, Clarice. I would want to let you know that uh, 
African youths are talented. Indeed, very, very talented. I wouldn't want to... Uh, I wouldn't want to take an example for myself because uh, I am uh, a seasoned entrepreneur. With, uh, with today, my company spreads across Africa. Across Africa, I I wouldn't want to be be, be naming uh, the various countries where I operate, but uh, I will let you know that we have potentials in Africa. We have great potentials in Africa, and we think that uh, if these potentials are carefully uh, carefully coordinated as we we leaders of uh, the independent adversary the independent continental adversary council are, are, are trying to do uh, we are going to have this agreement successfully implemented because as i just uh, mentioned it is like it is a catalyst for for the development of africa and we uh, leaders of tomorrow, we youth leaders of tomorrow, it is uh, it is it is actually a ball game, a ball game changer that has been put at our disposal, which I think uh, young entrepreneurs like myself we have to make use of it, and excel, and get our f our brothers and our peers on board because as I've said, uh, this agreement has come a long way to help us to stop youth manipulation. Because you, 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 you want to understand that uh, in most parts of Africa today, we have, uh, we have uprising here and there and all that and all that. Uh, those, are, those are young persons who are being manipulated and uh, they, they, they have no choice other than to, to, to get the, 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 the stipends they are being given to, to, to put their communities or their towns or their countries in, in, in difficulties. So we, we leaders we will use this agreement to help other youths to know that it is time for us to do constructive uh, uh, things and 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 and, and, bring, and and make a new page for africa we, we we are going to we are going to we are going to get to that and i can assure you with all what with all the strategies we have on ground we are going to get to that particular point of making africa great again of course, uh, taking Africa to the top, making Africa greater, bringing African solutions to African problems, unemployment, corruption, and uh, what have you, some of the problems faced uh, by uh, uh, young people of uh, the continent of uh, Africa. Uh, talking again, uh, Mr. Tamba, you, you're just uh, pointing out very important aspect. Eh? youth manipulation which is very very vital in today's uh, era where there is this geopolitical tension we see how vulnerable youths are being manipulated uh, uh, by uh, uh, the other party to actually carve their spheres but then can that end uh, under the after under the african continental free trade area what if young people are Give, uh, given uh, the, the opportunity uh, they need to, to excel. Let's answer this question, uh, Pamela. Do you think that if uh, young people today are at the, the, the forefront uh, of the implementation phase of the uh, African continental free trade area, it will uh, solve the problems faced by Africans? Yes, of course. But then how can this go practically? Pamela, can you hear me? I I was asking uh, now, uh, Mr. Tamba just uh, uh, pointed out key issues, uh, talking about youth manipulation, talking about the problems faced by young people in Africa, and of course, uh, looking at uh, uh, the, the endowment of Africa, but then uh, the continent is still, uh, young people are still facing a lot. So now, the, the, the African continent of free trade area is, is, is a milestone, and of course, I was asking, do you think the young people in Africa are ready to take advantage eh, or to use the, the advantages of the African continental free trade area in this uh, present context? Are they ready? If not, what is keeping them behind? One of, one of the major issues we have been facing in Africa is having policies implemented and young people are not involved. 
So when these policies come, you end up seeing that they do not favor young people. But this is not the case in the AFCFTA. The Independent Continental Youth um, Advisory Council on the AFCFTA is causing a change. It's bringing the youth the opportunity to actually have their voices heard in the issue of the AFCFTA. So I do not think we would get it wrong this time. And I do think that it would go on well for the whole of Africa because young people have no excuse to, su to not succeed. We are the ones saying this is the problem. This is how we want you to address the problem. We are doing businesses. We are doing trade. These are the difficulties we are having. If you follow this path, if you follow our suggestion, it would make it good. Of course, I want to do business. I want to do well for myself. But when I find it difficult to trade just because of policies on ground within fellow African countries, I find it difficult to get a visa to a fellow African country. That is absolutely wrong. But these are things that the AFCFTA is coming to address. And now if young people tell you, okay, this and this is what we are facing, they really would be able to address this issue. So young people are ready. We are ready. It's, and that's our duty. I'm actually part of the Independent Advisory Council. So we are getting young people. Information used to be the problem, but we have left the age now where information should be a problem. Now, I am here talking to you people, so I know many more persons will hear, and then I know very well that the young people are ready. Thank you. The young people are uh, ready, but then... Uh, let's look at this. The, the, the president of Rwanda some years back when talking uh, highlighted that, you know, uh, every day there have been lots and lots of debates uh, 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 surrounding the African youth. And then uh, uh, most uh, at times uh, blame uh, go to the uh, political leaders, the political actors, and he challenged young people in Africa by saying, uh, that there is need for them to go out there, face the challenges, take the opportunities, and of course, thrive, and of course, see where they can uh, contribute. Because today, when we talk about uh, enhancing uh, trade among African countries, we are talking about uh, us bringing our expertise. And of course, we're talking about Africa open, especially uh, to foreign direct investment. Uh, uh, Pamela, I will stay with you. We can Senor, you pointed out uh, the young people are uh, an asset yeah, to, to the African con uh, uh, continent. Uh, I, I really much appreciate your, your presence here as, as a lady, and I want us to look at the role of the women in the after, because uh, reports have proven uh, that women make up a, a huge percentage of the informal sector. So what do you think the, is the role of the women under the African continent of free trade area, and how engaged are young women in uh, this uh, youth forum, uh, bringing together and, of course, uh, building the spirit of entrepreneurship, which is of very much uh, importance in the present day, uh, Africa, where the continent policymakers are charting a new uh, tra trajectory, uh, economic trajectory for the continent. Awesome. Yes, I love to speak as a woman, and um, I would boldly say that these are the times where women are no longer laid back. Women are no longer where they used to be just in the kitchen or somewhere women especially young women are entering into business and statistics has proven that women businesses tend to live more because they know how to multitask they know how to engage and keep their businesses alive so they want to thrive and also it's an awesome opportunity for young women to take advantage of the afcfta Anything that would put the gender, the female gender in forefront is something that young people are looking towards because this is the present climb that we are. Everything is changing. Young people, especially young, I will focus on young women. They are into businesses. Young women are now into businesses. Nobody sits back. Gone are the days where you wait for one person to provide for the family. Women now know that I have a duty as well to provide. One source of income is no longer enough. So why shouldn't I be interested in doing business? They are interested. I work with a lot of young women that are into entrepreneurship, doing businesses. So they are ready. And it goes all together with the whole, the young people in Africa. They are ready. 
But the thing is, is there a sane climate for business? Is there a sane climate for business? That is the issue where we have. The people are ready. The youths are ready. The women are ready to do business. I am ready to do business. I'm a businesswoman. Yes, I'm a businesswoman, a career woman as well. I'm ready to do business. I can say that for a lot of young women. They are ready. But we just want these barriers to be out of the way. And I repeat that that is what the AFCFTA is for. And our work is information. People need to know that things are being put in place to make the ease of business. And yes, if this are put in place, more people will come into business. Africa will be out of poverty. Africa would rely on itself. I should be proud to remain in Africa, do business in Africa. I do not need to leave to another country. Why? Why should I leave? I should be proud of my country. I should be able to go to any African country at any time. Thank you. That is free circulation. That is how can we ensure uh, that the Africa treats uh, with its server perfectly without uh, the, the barriers we have. Uh, and of course, it, it brings us uh, now again, uh, Mr. Tamra, uh, to this other question. We know very well that the historic free trade area, when countries signed and ratified uh, the treaty, it, it was welcomed with much cheer uh, across Africa. Uh, but then we still saw some of the, the challenges of countries having to cede uh, via uh, sovereignty or, or maybe allow their borders open to ensure that uh, uh, the, the, the circulation, I beg your pardon, to ensure the circulation of uh, goods and uh, services or people. So let's ask, it is imperative and we all know that if well implemented, and of course, if we follow the dictates of the African continental free trade area, it will be a boost, not just to African governments, but to a private sector as well. You mentioned earlier, you're an entrepreneur, and you know all well, the uh, contributions of the private sector in ensuring the total transformation of the country. So let's let's see uh, how uh, our political leaders are working towards uh, fast-tracking uh, this uh, a continental trade. Thank you very much, uh, Clarice. Uh, as I just mentioned here, I am coming from a, from a fact-finding mission because uh, when uh, AFTAC was brought, was brought on board, uh, my, I, my company, which is a Pan-African logistic company, I and other board members decided to elaborate and uh, expand the company across the continent. And we have successfully done that in uh, in West Africa, uh, and uh, it was time for us to to link West Africa to Central Africa, from Central Africa to East Africa. I'm not a politician, uh, but I would want to say that Central Africa will be will be the area where this particular agreement is going to is going to be drawn back. Uh, uh, it's it's really it's really a pity because uh, I am from actually I'm, I'm actually from 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 this, this part of Africa, Central Africa, being a Cameroonian. I I wept when I went to Congo. Uh, when I left Cameroon by road, traveling to uh, Central Africa, it was it was it was hell, because having stayed in Nigeria for close to twelve years today, uh, it is quite easy living Lagos. To Abidjan. Within 24 hours, you can leave Lagos and travel safely on road to Abidjan. I have witnessed that severally, and uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing that ECOWAS, the, the economic community of West Africa, has done a has done a marvelous job in connecting countries in that part of Africa with good roads. But when you come to Central Africa, I don't know if it's a curse. I don't, I, I don't understand. It's a mess. My logistic company, we, we, have, we, have, over, uh, we have over eight uh, motorbikes transporting goods from Kampala, from Uganda to uh, part of uh, Central Africa and, uh, and uh, part of Congo. That's Congo Democratic. I tell you, Clarice, is a hell because of bad roads. Because of bad roads. So we, we, we as uh, youth leaders, we are determined to bring our leaders to book. Because 
for this to happen and for us youth to contribute to the success of this we need facilities and those facilities those facilities we will need a good access roads good communication network you go to a country like congo it's hell you you, you send you send a, a, a whatsapp message to somebody it takes two days to deliver it takes two days to be delivered so i don't know we we, we are going to we are going to do our almost best to bring our leaders to task so that you should be able to give us those facilities that will ease this particular agreement and of course he is uh, underlining the challenges of uh, being uh, faced uh, by a young entrepreneur in uh, africa and how then can uh, political actors uh, make sure uh, that uh, the solver these uh, problems are uh, uh, impeding the full implementation of uh, the uh, african continental free trade area seeing africa trade with itself especially uh, uh, in uh, the uh, 21st century uh, and of course how can we uh, emancipate the continent africa how can we talk about africa making itself to the top uh, uh, without uh, having a clear uh, network uh, especially uh, you underlined uh, mr tamber uh, uh, the, the the road network uh, these are some of the problems faced uh, by or uh, impeding uh, the the full uh, implementation uh, uh, or the execution of trade under the african continent of free trade area and of course uh, we take this opportunity to say thank you to those of you just tuning in if you're on to african media for the first time this is a pan-african television uh, and this is a platform where we get to discuss issues affecting the the african uh, continent and how we can bring about African uh, uh, solutions to African problems. And today, the youth uh, uh, focus uh, for, to, for, to, for this day, uh, how can we make them very active on the uh, uh, African continent of free trade area? Skills development is well underlined under the development agenda 2063. Uh, making young people thrive, uh, giving them opportunities, uh, uh, not only at the economic level, but at every sphere on the continent is also also very vital to see their engagement of course this will go a long way to curtail uh, the problems faced by young people we are talking about radicalization because uh, uh, you can bear with me that the continent Africa is very vibrant uh, turbulent uh, I beg your pardon at this uh, uh, present moment how can these problems especially political problems be resolved to see that the continent trades well with itself and of course make use of the uh, uh, opportunities of, of the african uh, the historic african continent our free trade area i will invite us to listen to this uh, except uh, uh, while representing uh, the secretary uh, general of after uh, uh, dr perdins uh, uh, welcome the young people challenging them and giving them of course the go ahead encouragement to stay positive and of course uh, uh, and to see how they can right the wrong and also contribute their quarter in uh, defining a clear economic trajectory of the continent africa i will join you right after that uh, i'm delighted to have this opportunity to deliver the remarks to commemorate the inaugural afcfta youth day organized by independent continental youth advisory council on the afcfta Ikoyaka and support by International Trade Center, ITC. I'm delivering this um, speech on behalf of the AFCFTA Secretary General, His Excellency Swam Kellen Mene, uh, who would have wished to be with you today to celebrate this um, uh, Youth Day, um, but due to other engagement, he was not able to make it. Um, myself, I'm very um, committed to supporting young Africans, um, of course, um, under my portfolio. Um, I would like to deliver this message of hope, um, this message of encouragement, this message of uh, um, urge the young Africans to take full ownership of the AFCFTA. Um, as we celebrate the first day, uh, the first AFCFT Youth Day on the continent. I would like to remind young Africans that AFCFT is meant for you. AFCFT is for the future, um, as is for other trade agreements. Uh, the agreement has been negotiated by governments, 
Uh, it has been negotiated by um, senior officials who are in their 50s, in their 60s. But when it comes to its implementation, we are looking to you guys who are in your 20s, in your 30s, uh, because uh, the agreement is going to enter into force um, and it is going to be fully operationalized uh, in the next five uh, to ten years. So uh, you can look at the opportunities which you have to start preparing for today. Um, there are many reasons uh, to believe that young Africans uh, have potential to reap the benefits of the FCFTA. The first one is that young Africans, you are the majority on the continent. The continent of 1.3 billion people count for more than 70% uh, who are under 30, who are young, who are uh, in the category of youth. So the FCFTA which provides opportunities for the continent is going to benefit mainly young people. It is going to benefit you. Indeed, it's uh, going to benefit young people, but then are the young people ready to take advantage? Are the young people ready to excel? And of course, how can we uh, actually match the, the will of the young people and of course the political will in seeing that uh, uh, the youth in Africa excel on the uh, uh, African continent, our free trade uh, uh, area? Uh, let me come to you, Pamela. Uh, we continue in this perspective we've been talking about harnessing potentials and giving young people the opportunity under the AFCF uh, a, the year after a big your present. Let us understand very well when we talk about these potentials or youth potential, what does that entail? And of course, uh, it's, 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 it's imperative uh, to, to, uh, to educate uh, our viewers out there to know what it takes and how they can go about it. Uh, let's hear from you in your opinion. What do you thing is this uh, youth potential and how important it is on the, the uh, uh, after okay so for young people one interesting part about young people in this age is we are in the digital era so the young people are here to bring innovation and digital skills into the AFCFTA with inculcating digital technology, with inculcating digital skills, with inculcating innovation into the AFCFTA, it would bridge the gap of the, actually of Africa actually achieving the goal of the AFCFTA by 2063. Because we know that everybody, the world is closer to itself right now. So Africa should bring itself closer and stronger actually taking advantage of digital technology that is what the young people are bringing that is what they are good at they are innovators and if we take advantage of the innovations and the digital skills of young people we would see that we would have twice the speed that the AFCFTA is meant to have so I think that is one of the strengths of young people in Africa and they are resilient once given the opportunity they are ready to deliver so like i said before and i stand on my ground young people are ready so they are ready and they are ready to bring their innovations their creativity their digital skills to actually help ease of business and trade in africa thank you dear pamela for for that uh, young people are ready and uh, uh, they are ready to take advantage. I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Tamba. You underlined something earlier on talking about youth manipulation. And today we are looking at how young people in Africa can be emancipated or em empowered economically. That is promoting entrepreneurship, uh, which is not actually easy in Africa. We know barriers of uh, uh, startup businesses across Africa. So in your own uh, perspective, uh, what do you think African governments can do to reduce this youth manipulation and make them more engaged in economic activities across the country? Thank you very much. Continent. Thank yeah. you very much, Clarice. Uh, to be an entrepreneur is not a day's job. It's not a work about uh, initiative. Because uh, you, you have to be determined. You have to be determined in the vision, uh, in the mission, and all what you have as objective for what you are bringing forth. 
So it's not going to be an easy walkabout. It's not going to be an easy walkabout. Uh, talking about all the challenges present. Yeah, challenges will always be present. Challenges will be there, like uh, the road infrastructure I just mentioned. Uh, the road infrastructures are there. But uh, my company and all those I worked with, we decided to, to, to keep life moving. You can, you can imagine a, 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 a motorbike uh, transporting goods worth close to uh, 400 kilograms uh, for close to 2,300 uh, 2, kilometers. That, that, that can tell you that we have youth out there who are ready to get us implement and successfully implement the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And uh, we are this, we, we are bent on that. We have decided and we are going to have, we are going to accompany this agreement because we know it's going to be a game changer for us, the youth, most especially the African youth. So we are going to get this moving again. Yeah, it's a, it's a game changer for young people, especially in Africa. But then uh, let's look at it. The, the, the young people have uh, shown their readiness. So what is your, your plea? Uh, what message do you have? Uh, uh, especially I, I mentioned to the political leaders, they are at the helm. Of course, we cannot dissociate uh, trade or politics from trade because they are the center of it all. So, what message uh, can you forward to our policymakers uh, uh, to ensure that, with all the the the, the anxiety or the, the readiness uh, of uh, young people, to ensure that they commensurate this energy that is being brought forward uh, by the young people wanting to engage uh, under the African continental free trade area. Thank you very much, Clarice. As I just mentioned earlier, I am not into politics, I'm not a politician, but uh, sure. what is very certain is that we are, going to, we, are going to, we are going to bring our politician to task because uh, uh, the, the youth manipulations uh, si uh, syndrome and all that are being, are being masterminded by some of those politicians who want power by all means by all costs so we, we we are going to bring them to task and get them to give us those facilities we need for this agreement to be successfully implemented because as i just mentioned we we as leaders uh, catalyzing all of this initiative we are going to coordinate ourselves put ourselves together to see that we bring our leaders to task for them to know that for this agreement to be successfully implemented they have rights and obligations which needs to be put on ground for this to be done indeed uh, where is the political will uh, or is there a strong political will to engage uh, the young people to define a clear path for young people i'll come to you uh, pamela you're coming from nigeria we know that uh, nigeria uh, is a country uh, i call it a business hub because uh, uh, no matter how young a nigerian is he or she will want to engage or engage in the, uh, business so uh, uh, what is the government uh, of uh, of president uh, let me call it outgoing president uh, Buari, because we know that the country is uh, looking forward uh, uh, towards uh, uh, presidential elections uh, come february 2023 so what do you think the president or uh, the outgoing government is doing to ensure that young people who have shown an uh, interest uh, in thriving or in helping define uh, a clear economic uh, economic path for the uh, country is well placed and uh, they have all what uh, it takes to excel. So presently, I would not lie, as a Nigerian, a young Nigerian for that matter, it really is not easy doing business. With the present state of this, it's not easy doing business. You have the issues of the dollar fluctuating against the naira, the naira fluctuating against the dollar. You have that as a problem. When you put your prices, your prices cannot be stable. You have different issues. Policies keep changing two, four, seven, and these things are not comfortable for young people, especially young entrepreneurs. We've even gone way beyond finances for business because, okay, people are taking the bull by the horn to get their finances themselves and do business, but then the economy is still not certain or, or well-organized enough to make, this, to make this business successful. 
imagine I have to buy something at a rate and next thing when I want to sell, I realize the dollar is, the, the Naira is now how much? How do I sell? How do I sell these goods? It becomes a problem. People that are buying issues like that are crazy. It makes business difficult. And that is where the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on the AFCFT is coming into play. We, it's an opportunity for young people to speak up, to actually see to the implementation of the AFCFTA. We've had different agendas. We've had different policies in the whole of Africa, not just Nigeria, that ends in the point of talk, talk, talk. We do not want this to continue. That is the focus of the Youth Advisory Council. We do not want this to continue. We want to see to the implementation. Every young person in Africa, no matter your country, you should hold your government to ransom. And it is by not keeping quiet, it is by speaking out, it's by telling them, no, we are no longer going to keep quiet or accept the norm. That is what we are doing. That is the power that we have as young people. We, I am not in, in the political sector. I, um, even if I'm not there yet, even if I might be there someday, I am not there yet. What can I do now is to speak up. That is what we are doing, to speak up and do not keep quiet. When we do not keep quiet, we would see that things would change. And I know that young people are speaking up. We are doing it and we pray and hope that it actually comes to reality, what we want. Thank you. Indeed, uh, there is uh, always, uh, uh, we are always very positive or optimistic to see that uh, uh, things uh, work out well. And it, it, it's good to, to, to know that young people have decided uh, to, to take uh, uh, this uh, bold step uh, to contribute uh, uh, this uh, uh, their own quota to uh, the building of the African continent by building themselves. Eh? Uh, let's look at, you mentioned something Pamela about how it is difficult to uh, do business uh, in Nigeria looking at the, uh, uh, the, the Naira and of course we are coming again to you Mr. Tamba now the difficulties of trading in Africa. We are talking about the lack of a single currency. How is it, how are the youth going to, to maybe excel or to push through uh, under this, uh, uh, the continental free trade area when there is no single currency? Anything about, has the advisory council done anything to see how they can push the uh, African governments towards uh, looking at how uh, the continent can become financially independent to spur and to facilitate this uh, uh, trade thank you very much clarice uh before coming to before uh, actually giving you an answer to your question i would like to uh, get pamela understand that nigeria is a blessed country i am telling you this pamela because mm -hmm. i think you should know that i'm a traveler nigeria is a blessed country and i tell you the truth pamela if Entrepreneurs in Nigeria are coordinated. They will, they will, they will, they, 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 they will occupy the whole of Africa with this particular agreement. I know what I'm telling you about. I know where I'm coming from, and uh, I can tell you with all certainty that uh, Dr. Ezarak at uh, the Nigerian uh, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council is doing a great job. And if that should continue. I tell you the truth, Pamela. There, there will be nowhere you go to in Africa and don't find made in Nigeria products. So coming back to your your, your question, uh, Clarice, uh, we 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 know all of these difficulties because uh, 51, 54 countries sincerely having different different currencies is not an encouragement to trade. So all of that was actually was carefully uh, studied and uh, that is why the African Continental Free Trade Secretariat had to come out with, uh, uh, with the PPS, PPAS, that's the Pan-African Payment and Settlement uh, uh, Policy. Today it's possible, to, it's possible to send an amount or to pay for an article in Nigeria, not necessarily using either the naira which is used there or the dollars as pamela as uh, pamela just mentioned or the france cfa we have in central africa when the money is sent to nigeria 
the, 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 the entrepreneur in Nigeria can collect the Naira without any stress because of that particular clause put in place by the African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement Secretariat. So uh, the issue of uh, currencies and whatever will not be a problem to this particular agreement. Please let people know that currencies will not be a problem. If they have any issue concerning whatsoever as to this particular agreement, we are here to facilitate most especially the movement of goods and persons. Please, we have what it takes and we are going to make sure that is on hold. Indeed, uh, this shows that the uh, uh, African Continental Free Trade Secretariat is uh, actually at work. And, and we see, uh, we mentioned, uh, there are countries that are already trading on uh, under the uh, uh, the free trade uh, zone. Uh, we have just a few minutes uh, to, to be together. Uh, Pamela, coming back to you, we're now looking at uh, the way forward, the way forward, because uh, the this year the the, the first uh, or the, the the inaugural edition of the uh, african continental free trade area youth day was celebrated uh, what uh, are some of the uh, the the specificities of this youth day and uh, like what do they intend uh, to attend let's say in in the next two years or the next five years uh, especially uh, I, uh, we can already see some positive aspects of uh, the uh, uh, african continent of Trade area uh, highlighting that the secretariat stationed in uh, ghana is actually at work okay so awesome, like you said, and like we've all been saying, the AFCFTA is actually working seriously hard at work. And we know that if we continue with this energy in this space, Africa should be able to see results in the next five years. Africa should be able to see a whole lot of results. Things are being put in place. And um, the interesting part of the AFCFTA is, is that it is unlike all the um, policies that might end up in just talk, talk, talk. You know, we are going beyond talk. We are going into implementation. Like he said, there's already an avenue for you to trade um, with currency. You do not have to uh, change your mind. Like, if, for instance, I wanted to do um, business in Ghana and I'm in Nigeria, I have to change my money to dollars and then before I not change it back to the CDs, which are uh, uh, a certain other economy somewhere enjoying money even without working. So now the EFCFTA is bringing their own into place. I do not have to bother changing my currency to the dollar and someone else makes money out of my business. It becomes easy for me to do business in the whole of Africa with a, a single payment system that is being put in place and it would keep advancing. It would keep advancing. Things are looking really, really good. And I can assure you that if we come back to this topic in the next five years, you would see significant improvements. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, uh, Pamela. Uh, one last word from you, uh, uh, Mr. R uh, Ruben Tamber. Uh, we are we are culminating. What what do you have to say? Uh, a message, especially to young people, and especially uh, young people in the Central African uh, uh, region. Uh, you made mention, uh, and we know that it is a bedrock uh, for economic uh, activities. But then, when you look at the obstacles, there are my rights. There are many. So so what can you say, uh, young people, policy, governments in this region, and as far as uh, encouraging uh, uh, maybe a, a trade or encouraging young people to engage more on economic activities than uh, uh, be part of the radicalization uh, uh, that is uh, ongoing across Africa right now? My message for young people this afternoon is that they should be very, very optimistic. The future is bright, and indeed very, very bright with this, with this agreement. As I just mentioned, we are very determined, and all those young persons who are having difficulties or whatsoever can get in contact with us, and we are going to give them directives on how this agreement is going to be implemented. As you just mentioned, the countries like Tunisia, Egypt, Ghana, Cameroon, Rwanda, Kenya, and Tanzania are test running the process so uh from every indication it's going to be a success and we are calling on all youths 
those who have businesses those who are still struggling to create businesses to know that it's time for them to come on board it's time for them it's time for them to come on board so that together we can put our energies together to get this agreement implemented successfully okay thank you so much time for young people to come on board and be part of this uh, running train uh, that uh, wants to change narratives across africa in the economic sphere uh, one last word from you uh, pamela especially uh, uh, to the young people uh, uh, young women yeah young women across africa as far as taking uh, the uh, the bold step is uh, 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 involved okay so for young women i want you people i want us to be encouraged you know for anything to actually be successful and truly successful women have to be involved they bring the extra into the extra they bring multitasking they see to completion of tax and yes young women should not be left aside i know seriously i i i know i know because i am here i'm talking to you uh we are at the point where young women no longer sit back we don't sit back on at those days so yes young people will try to pull in more young women to be truly involved in the matters of the asap because it's going to help them in doing business it's going to improve africa for africa by africans so yes young women are ready and we'll keep bringing in more young women into this thank you pamela thank you for making our time uh, to uh, give your own understanding or your own opinion on uh, this uh, aspect of youth potential and how they can excel on the, the african continent uh, free trade area and of course thank you to uh, mr uh, ruben tamba for being there and uh, of course encouraging young people it's not easy starting business uh, any entrepreneur can uh, attest to this uh, that uh, the journey of an entrepreneur uh, is uh, uncertain and uh, it's uh it involves a risk taking but remain optimistic as uh, the uh, uh, those in the panel just outlined today and to know that uh, uh, the african continental free trade area has the the potential or the capacity to increase uh, trade uh, intra african trade and uh, statistics shows that uh, uh, this increase will be uh, by a percentage of 15 to 25 or uh, 50 billion dollars to 70 billion dollars uh, uh, to say that young people are levers for change in Africa so it is imperative for them to take uh, the advantages make the, their voices heard on the, the uh, uh, African continental free trade area of course and be proud to have written the uh, new economic trajectory for Africa Africa Development Agenda 2063. Let youth be included. Let you take advantages of the uh, the opportunities and of course show what they have to offer to the continent. Again, bringing African solutions to African problems. Bye bye. I beg to leave you now. But do stay in the company of our programs on African media television. See you some other time. Talking about it. Good day and good day to us, the viewers of Africa. Thank you, thank you, Africa.